Hi, I'm Kerry. I'm the retired financial advisor that uh, talks to you about retirement. And I want to share my experiences in retirement here in my YouTube channel, Best of Us in Retirement. I'm sick. Uh, I'll declare that up front. Last Saturday, uh, I got up out of bed and I felt like I'd been hit by a truck, rolled underneath the truck and spit out the backside. Every muscle in my body ached. I mean, from my toes to the top of my head, my shoulders, my calves, everything ached. I, I got out of bed, dropped to my knees and started doing some of my yoga, my down dog and my, um, um, what do you call it, cat and cow and dropped into a push up, trying to loosen my muscles up and get rid of that pain. And it, it relatively worked. I went in, went to the bathroom uh, and I noticed my pee was a bright yellow and it smelled, smelled like a, a Christmas ham that would, had been cooked a little too long. And I thought, wow, what the hell's going on? And so I went about my daily work and everything was fine. And when I finished up, I, I in fact went in and sat down next to Nita to watch the evening news. And as I sat there, I started shaking, I quivering and, and, and literally went into a ball. I was cold. I was shaking. And, and I, I, I felt the pains coming back into my body. And I was breathing heavy. And uh, I said, I'm going into some sort of shock. And uh, we watched the news. And at six o'clock, I was in bed. Um, I, uh, again, when I got in bed, I put as many covers as I could on my body and, and tried to get warm and by, by eight o'clock, I was warm, and then I was started to get uh, uh, hot. I started to push the blankets off. Got up the next morning, I was, I was fine. Went to the bathroom again, the, the yellow pee with the, the, the ham smell. But I went ahead and did my, my videos for the day, even, even got out and walked two miles. But at 5.30 that evening, I was shivering again. I was quaking. My body was saying, no, no, that we aren't going forward on this one. Uh, went to bed, this time at six o'clock, slept, slept till six in the morning, got on the phone, called the doctor, says, I think I must have a urinary tract infection and I need some medication. They said, you need to come in for uh, some sort of uh, lab test. I said, I don't need a lab test. I know what's going on. I've had this before. No, you need a lab test. So I Googled. I said, and I added the other symptoms that I was having. And Google tells me back that maybe I have a liver disease and I need to, uh, I, I can be cured if I get care. So I called the medical, my doctor back again and said, this is I need to I, I need to get that lab test. So later this afternoon, I'm going to have the lab test if she calls me back and sets me up for it. And I realized at that point how lucky I was. And what do I mean by that? What if what if I lived in Africa in a hut and had this happen to me? I'd die. It's that simple. And, and then what if I lived in southern Alabama out in the Black Belt and I was a, was a widower and I just lived by myself and I had, didn't have any kids or anybody to depend on, what would happen to me? I'd die. Is this necessary? No, none of this is necessary because I wear a Fitbit. I can look at my Fitbit chart and I can see that my resting heart rate starting on Saturday started to climb. I can see that the temperature of my body started to climb. I can see that, that um, my oxygen saturation level started to climb. My body was reacting to whatever is going on to me. But guess what? Google owns my Fitbit. Google knows there's something going on, at least their algorithm does, but they're not allowed to share that information with my doctor. And my doctor's not allowed to share that information, share his information with Google. Why? Protection of my privacy. Privacy from what? 
This is the guy who sticks his finger up my ass when I go in for a prostate. I don't have any privacy with him. This is my life. I know Quantum Psi makes a a um, apparatus that I could have in my in my bathroom, and I could prick my finger every morning, and it would analyze my blood, and it would tell me if I have a liver problem. That's available. I know that Sanford University and Harvard have both developed a a smart toilet, a toilet that should be in my house. That when I poop, it goes through a five G probe and it analyzes my poop and compares my poop to your poop. And, and then when I pee, it goes through a reservoir and it analyzes my pee and compares it to yours. And I would not be in the jeopardy I am now if I had not acted on my own behalf and if I wasn't affluent enough to have insurance so that I wasn't afraid to go to a doctor. And if I had been have, have had the transportation and the spouse to help me get this done, I would die. But the crazy part about this is the technology is there that every one of us in retirement should have a Fitbit or a smartwatch. It should be government issue when you go on Medicare. It should be a, a smart toilet. Just like when you go into the army, you get a whole new, you, you get that when you go into Medicare. You get a smart toilet, you get a smart mirror. So you stand in front of your mirror naked and it sees that you have a growth on your body that you didn't have there yesterday. This technology is all there, but why isn't it happening? Hell, we, we, we lost yesterday 1,632 people to cancer in the United States. How did that happen? In 1971, Richard Nixon passed the Cancer Act to find a cure for cancer. Huh? 1971, in 2016, Barack Obama and Joe Biden declared war on cancer. That was 2016 because Joe lost his son to cancer. How's it going, Joe? How's your war going? Are your casualties going down? No. Why? Because you and I are not demanding it. We are not saying this is bullshit. You people get yourselves together or get the fuck out. Our Congress is, is more concerned that Trump or Joe would find, would be in office when there is a cure for cancer because they would be, they would be upstaged. So they don't give a damn. They don't care that Kerry's sick and that he could die if he wasn't affluent, if he wasn't living in the right place, and if he didn't have access to initiate on his own behalf the care that he needs to keep him, to get rid of whatever I had. I, this is the first time in my life I have ever been at death's door. And, that, and you may think that's an exaggeration. No, it is not. If I wasn't where I am, if I wasn't of the mindset that I am, if I did not have the transportation that I have, I would die. We need to change this. And we need to demand. Nixon didn't get it done. Barack and Joe didn't get it done. So it's up to us. The technology's there. It's there. They just don't give a damn because they've never been at death's door. That's where I am. The, 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 the beauty of it is I know how to avoid it. I have the wherewithal. Hopefully you do as well. And hopefully this video will incur, first of all, will empower you that if ever what hap has happened to me in the last five days happens to you, you are inspired to do what you need to do to get it taken care of. 
And if you're unlucky enough that you aren't prosperous enough, affluent enough, have a support system enough, get that changed. Retirement should be good. I've just seen the dark side.